In the last 30 years, Jeep has built over 8.6 million vehicles with solid front axles, coil springs, and a track bar. This suspension setup, which they call Quadralink, is named because it has four control arms that help locate the front axle in the longitudinal plane. For low speed off-road work, there is no finer suspension setup in existence. However, all 8.6 million of these vehicles can suffer from a phenomenon called death wobble. And if your Jeep has ever had death wobble, you know. Today, we're going to learn how to find and repair the various causes of that death wobble. First, let's get to know the steering components that hold the front axle in place, what they do, and how they work. In order to better show you guys what happens um, as all the steering components work together to transfer the motion of turning the steering wheel to the motion of steering the car, I'm going to go ahead and pop the hood and then actually jack the vehicle up a little bit so I don't have to talk over the noise of the engine. Always use jack stands. Alright everybody, this is Lion. She's going to hop in the driver's seat and turn the steering wheel back and forth for us. And I will show you what happens with the steering linkage underneath the front of the Jeep. So as you turn the steering wheel, the steering wheel turns the steering sector shaft, which then transfers that input to the power steering pump, which then provides more power assistance and turns the steering linkage via the pitman arm. From underneath the Jeep, you can see where the pitman arm attaches to the drag link, and the drag link attaches to both the tie rod, which goes back towards the, the driver's side, as well as the passenger side steering knuckle. Now on the steering knuckle you have your lower and upper ball joints, and those function as an axis on which the steering knuckle can turn, which turns the entire wheel and tire assembly with it. On the other side of the car, the steering knuckle is moved by the tie rod and the tie rod end. While the steering linkage controls the direction the wheels and tires are pointed relative to the front axle, the control arms determine the orientation of the front axle relative to the Jeep itself. The two control arms located on each side of the vehicle keep the front axle assembly from shifting forwards and backwards along the longitudinal axis of the vehicle while driving. They also prevent the axle from rotating, which would cause changes to the vehicle's caster setting, which would cause a loss of handling and the inability to track straight ahead. Each control arm is attached at one end to the frame of the vehicle and at the other end to the front axle of the vehicle. Depending on whether you're running stock or aftermarket control arms, there are rubber or polyurethane bushings located at either end of each control arm. These help to isolate road noise and vibration and keep them from being transmitted into the cabin of the vehicle. The last component of the front end to understand before we begin diagnosing our death wobble is the track bar. The track bar is perhaps the most important of all, as it is the only component that keeps the axle centered underneath the vehicle left to right. It attaches at the driver's side on the frame and to the axle on the passenger side. Now before we begin our diagnosis, let's define what death wobble is. Death wobble is an uncontrolled harmonic oscillation of the entire front axle assembly. It's not a shimmy. A shimmy is what happens when you have a rotational imbalance in a wheel or you have some play in the steering linkage. Now, if you have enough play in the steering linkage, you can get a shimmy that will approach the level of death wobble. But to get full-on death wobble, the entire front axle assembly has to move. And for that, you need play in the track bar. Now, to finish our diagnosis, we need to put the vehicle on the ground and run the motor. So we need to open the garage door as well. And you're going to need a partner. With the vehicle back on the ground, running and in park, or with the brake set if it's a manual, begin by having your partner turn the steering wheel back and forth. Look at each of the four rod end joints and examine them for any play. If needed, use your fingers to feel for any play or movement. Any popping motions or movement in the joints of any kind means they need to be replaced. Pay special attention to the track bar. The joint where the track bar meets the frame on the driver's side of the vehicle is the single most common cause of death wobble if it's loose. Also, if you've had death wobble before, 
make absolutely certain that the bolt that holds the axle side of the track bar hasn't wallowed out its mounting hole. Replace anything that isn't tight. On this 1998 XJ Cherokee, we can see that the track bar needs to be replaced as the frame side rod end joint is very worn. Also, the rod end joint where the drag link meets the pitman arm is quite loose as well. Alright, now that we have the parts to fix the Jeep, I'm going to close the garage door so we don't have to listen to the background noise, and let's get wrenching. Anytime you disconnect any steering components or replace any steering components, it's helpful if you take a quick measurement to help us set accurate toe-in when we reconnect things. So I'm going to pick a point about halfway up the height of each tire, and I'm going to use my jack stands as a reference, that way it's repeatable, and I'm going to write that figure down. I'm about 46 and 5 16 inches. Since we know we need to replace the rod end at the end of the drag link where it connects to the pitman arm, and having this out of the way makes it easier to get to the track bar, which we also have to replace, let's go ahead and get this one done first, and then we'll do the track bar after that. So first we're going to remove the cotter pin. Now on most TJs and XJs, you just need a three-quarter inch socket to remove the nut on the rod end. And from there, we'll use a box wrench to remove it the rest of the way. We're actually not going to take it completely off because I have a tie rod end removal tool that will make our life much easier. Now that that's on, we'll use a three-quarter box wrench to tighten this, which spreads this apart, pivots on that, squeezes these together, and we'll pop the stud right out of the pitman arm. And away it goes. Now before we actually remove the rod end off of the drag link, count the threads. Looks like we have about a half dozen here because the drag link centers the steering wheel and if we're able to install the new one pretty close to where the old one was, it'll save us some work later on. Now using a 15 millimeter socket or a box end wrench, we're going to loosen up the nuts on the adjuster so that we can spin the rod end off of the end of the drag link. If you live in the salt belt, this can be a real bear. So whenever you reinstall the new piece, make sure to use plenty of anti-seize compound. Almost there. There we are. Next we're going to apply some anti-seize. easily now. The rod end actually installs backwards so to speak. It installs counterclockwise. I know a lot of you are thinking that I live in the salt belt and this is going to be way harder than on this Jeep. This Jeep is actually from Iowa although it's been in Colorado quite a while. But I made sure to hit everything ahead of time with penetrating lubricant and of course being me I cleaned the crap out of everything too. So. If you get some oil on things before you need to take them apart, give them a week or so, it's pretty easy. Alright, that's about right. Wipe off the extra anti-seize. Now even though we've installed the new rod end to the drag link, don't tighten the uh, nuts on the adjuster yet because we're still going to need to adjust this most likely. So next let's go ahead and remove the track bar. Now let's begin by removing the track bar from the frame side. You need to remove that cotter pin from the castellated nut, 
and then use a three quarter inch drive wrench to remove the nut itself. This one's a knuckle buster. Once you've popped loose the track bar from the frame side bracket, the ball set is going to want to spin while you remove the nut. So I've found that a good old fashioned one pound claw hammer is the perfect size to apply force and lever against the tie rod to hold it in place while you remove the nut the rest of the way. Tap with a hammer, and out it goes. With the frame side of the track bar removed, now we'll remove the axle side. So, breaker bar and a 15 millimeter, get that loose. Whew. That bugger is on there. And there's our track bar. Make absolutely certain that the axle side track bar mounting holes are perfectly round. If not, the extra plate can allow the bolt securing the track bar to move, which will cause death wobble. You'll need to weld washers over the holes to properly secure the bolt. Since I had good access while we had everything apart, I took a minute to clean anything that was rusty and give it a quick coat of satin black paint. Now it's time to install the new track bar and reattach the drag link. And I also noticed that the tie rod end on the driver's side is ever so slightly loose. So I picked up a new tie rod end and we'll get that one installed as well. Before we install the new track bar, we're going to wire brush the bolt and then of course put anti-seize on that. Alright, I have anti-seize on the threads of the track bar ball stud. So let's install that side. Push it up, and if you let it droop, it'll actually hold itself. And then three quarter inch socket. Now let's install the axle side of the track bar, and then we'll tighten those both down. All right, we have our anti-seize on the track bar axle side bolt. Factory torque spec for the axle side track bar mount is 40 foot pounds. I have found that to keep it tight, you need about 60. Factory torque for the frame side track bar mount is also 60 foot pounds. I've found that is not quite enough. You're going to need to get that to about 70 or 75 foot pounds. Now you may notice that that ball stud is spinning. So we're going to put a 2x4 underneath the bend in the track bar and use the jack to apply pressure upwards and that will keep this in place while we torque it to spec. Let's get some anti-seize on the ball stud for the drag link tie rod end. Now we need to reinstall our cotter pins. In order to have better access to remove the driver's side tie rod end, I'm going to go ahead and remove the wheel and tire assembly. Then remove the cotter pin. And the castellated nut. It's a three quarter inch.
using a half inch box wrench and a half inch six point socket, we'll loosen up the adjuster on the tie rod end and then we can remove the tie rod end itself. Now if you're having trouble getting the tie rod end off, use a little bit of heat. Actually, use a lot of heat. She's loose. They can be a real bear. For reference, that took about five or six minutes with a blowtorch to get it hot enough to move. There we are. Now we'll install the new tie rod end, of course, with lots of anti seize compound. And remember, it goes in backwards. It's a left-hand thread. Now that we have our tie rod end installed, we'll reinsert that into the steering knuckle. Lots of anti-seize on it. Install our castellated nut and cotter pin. We'll tighten up to 55 foot-pounds. If the hole doesn't quite line up to install the cotter pin, you want to over tighten, not under tighten, the castellated nut. There we go. Having replaced everything on the front end of the Jeep that was loose, we'll reinstall the wheel and tire assembly, lower the vehicle to the ground, and perform a quick alignment where we'll set the toe in and center the steering wheel. First, we'll use the tie rod to adjust the toe in. The tire should be pointed inwards or towed in about a sixteenth of an inch. Using a half inch socket and a half inch box wrench, go ahead and loosen up the clamps on either side of the tie rod. With your wrench pointing towards the front of the vehicle, moving the handle downwards will tow the vehicle out by spreading the front tires apart from each other, whereas moving the handle upwards will tow the vehicle in, making the front of the tires closer together. So let's get this as close to the measurement that we took earlier as we can. So we are within 1 16th of an inch, so let's go ahead and tighten everything up. Now we're going to want to back the Jeep up, roll it forward, and check the steering to make sure that it's centered. So now we're just going to loosen the drag link adjuster bolts and turn that until the steering wheel is centered. Have your partner tell you when the steering wheel is centered. Once the steering wheel is centered, tighten the nuts on the drag link adjuster to at least 36 foot-pounds. Don't forget to grease the new rod end joints that we installed. We want these to last a long time. So pump grease until the, the rubber boot is full but you don't want to pop it, so don't go too far. There we go. See the clean grease coming out from around the edges? That's the perfect amount of grease. That one's full. When you're done, you'll still need to have a full, proper alignment done. But for now, this should get you by. No death wobble.